Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah. Thanks for watching. Okay, today, friends, we have a very special episode. Today, I am sharing every garment that I made in 2023. So I will be talking about the sweaters, the tees, and the tank tops that I made. I'm looking over them <laughs> that I made this year. Um, before we get started, though, I just want to say two things. One, I know this type of video can attract new viewers. So if you're new to watching me and my channel, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe um, so you can see all my videos in the new year. And the second thing I wanted to say is um, these kinds of videos can also, for me at least, make me feel like, oh, I wish I had knit that or, oh, I wish I had that yarn or I wish I had more time to knit or more things to make. Um, and so I hope that um, I just wanted to say a little bit of encouragement to you if you're feeling that way. Um, I hope that my video does not make you feel that way. I have um, a good amount of knits for myself, but to other people it might look like a not a lot of knits um, or it might look like a ton of garments for a year. Um, my yarns might look expensive or not expensive or whatever, but we're just all in different places in our in our making practices um, and in our lives. And so I just wanted to encourage you with that, that whatever you made this year, I'm sure it was lovely um, and a learning experience. And please don't um, feel like you need to compare to my makes or someone else's makes or yarns. I'm just glad you're here and watching and I will go ahead and get started. Um, what you can expect from this video, since I am sharing garments, I will share the um, bust that's available for the patterns and then I'll also share like the recommended yarn what I used all of that um, I'll try to have them up on Ravelry we'll see I might just have a Ravelry bundle <laughs> instead of like my own project some of them are on my Ravelry some of them are not because it's hard for me to keep up with um, but anyway okay let's start in the order that I made them we'll start in January and my first is the canvas by Tet Besh Knitwear. So her um, pattern is actually available through Brooklyn Tweed. And the recommended yarn is all Brooklyn Tweed yarns. Um, it's a worsted weight and the sizes available, these are for the finished bust, are from a 37 and three quarters inch bust to a, let's see, a 79 and a half inch bust. Um, so that is definitely size inclusive and um, yeah, I did not use a worsted weight yarn. I used a sport weight yarn. I used a yarn that I used a lot this year. <laughs> I used Retrosaria Vovo. And I love it. <laughs> this is it. I made, um, I did the recommended amount of ease. Actually, I think I did less than the recommended amount of ease. So this sweater is a little bit smaller. Plus the fact that I used sport weight instead of, um, worse to wait just made the drape a little bit different but I'm really happy with it um I love it so much I love the color it's a little yellow I think because my light's on let me turn that off okay I got the overhead light off hopefully that will help okay yeah it's more pink now it's sort of a pale pink the color is called um pink I think um I purchased this yarn in an end of year sale from um U Fibers in Charlottesville Virginia and I love it. I'm really happy with it. I love these little pearl bumps right here along the neckline. Um, the, yeah, the sort of like seed stitch here and the, this, I just love it. It's also in the back, the cable panel, um, and then the cables that go down the top of the sleeve. So yes, I really, really, really like this pattern a lot. I would love to make it again. Overall, I, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I definitely think that the way the pattern is written, it can be a little difficult if you are not used to like charted patterns. Um, maybe do this as a knit along with a friend because it was a little difficult to do like the, this seed stitch pattern with also this pattern with also like short rows and increases and stuff. Um, so that was a little difficult, but it wasn't impossible. <laughs> and so if you're a confident chart reader, it shouldn't be shouldn't be an issue um okay so my second pattern that i knit this year that i really 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 loved i feel like a lot of my wins were from the first half of the year <laughs> but it's my first the first cardigan this is the first cardigan by hive knits also um her name's lizzie hester and oh the end came out i need to cut this off it's woven in i promise i just didn't have scissors i guess <laughs> Um, and so this is the first cardigan. It's the sister pattern of the first sweater, I guess. And so 
The um, size is available, size range available. Let's see, it's to fit 30 inches to 64 inch bust. Um, and then that's not including the ease. And I did the recommended amount of ease. The yarn weight is DK and she recommends holding a like fingering and a mohair together. I held Pearl Soho Goodwool in the colorway walking stick with knitting for olive hazel um, in the mohair and I love it. <laughs> I knit it to pattern, um, except for I did not knit the sleeves quite as long because my arms are just not quite as long. But the pattern itself was crazy detailed, and I think it was like 35 pages long, <laughs> which is like a lot of instructions. The, the pattern itself is not super complicated, but she just included so many different tips and tricks for knitting, deciding you know, how long to make your sleeves, how long to make the body. It just looks so clean. I love that um, double knit button band, the button. This was like my most worn sweater this year, I think, of sweaters that I've made this year. <laughs> I think so. Um, I took it on my trip to um, Amsterdam, Brussels, and Paris, and so I wore it there a lot, and I loved it. It held up. <laughs> it was perfect for the weather. Um, in the fall and it's like the warmest thing ever because this is like the half fisherman's rib I think or I think it's half fisherman's rib and so it's super warm and soft and then with the mohair and the wool I just really really love this I think my favorite feature maybe is the button band there we go yeah it's added after the double knit button band but these are always worth it to me I feel like they're just the best and I love them <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is a wonderful addition to my wardrobe this year and I'm super happy with it. I highly recommend the pattern. I recommend this yarn. Um, Knitting for Olive and Pearl Soho yarns are some of my favorites, so holding them together uh, was wonderful. I forgot to say this, so this year I knit um, mostly from my yarn pantry. Actually, well, all from my yarn pantry. <laughs> and so a lot of the like colors or patterns and stuff, I had to get kind of creative in how I was like deciding to make things. Um, and if I wanted to like make a specific pattern but I didn't have the yarn, I kind of just put it off for, you know, 20 for 24. And so um, I forgot, I can't believe I forgot to say that. <laughs> I just like pieced together stuff that I already had to kind of make things work. So this was yarn I already had in my yarn pantry and it worked out perfectly holding it together and I'm super happy with it. And I want to make a bunch more. I probably won't because I also want to make a bunch of new patterns, but I do feel like this is one I could come back to and make myself a lot of sweaters in this. But I might try the first sweater, so it's like the same, but it's just not a cardigan. So I might try that in 2024 because I just love that one so much. <laughs> okay, so let's talk at this time I sort of stopped, this was about February, March. I sort of stopped knitting garments for myself and I did a few gift knits. So the first is a Stockholm slipover for my mom. Obviously I don't have that because I gifted it to her, um, but she really likes it. <laughs> and um, I enjoyed knitting it. The bust circumference sizes are for a 31 to a 59 inch bust. And it's recommended to use a worsted weight yarn. So I did, I used Cascade Eco Wool. I knit it in white for her and she wanted, I mean, she didn't ask for it, but she had talked about like, oh, what if I had something like that? Kind of like a layering piece for a flannel or kind of like a button up, that kind of thing. And so, yes, I made her a white Stockholm slipover and she really likes it. <laughs> it's kind of like a wardrobe staple, I guess, is to have like a, um, kind of classic slipover piece and yeah that's all I have to say about it. It was a nice knit. She really enjoyed it. I gave it to her for her birthday um, which was over the summer so she didn't get a lot of wear out of it but I think she will. It fits perfectly and yeah I followed it to pattern. Thumbs up. Uh, the next thing I made was um, Micah's Raglan which is actually a kids pattern of mine and I'm not including my kids patterns on this video. Um, Although they are garments I made this year, they're not adult size garments I made this year. I'll make a separate video of all my designs if you're interested in that. And that will include all of my designs um, from 2023. But I sized up this sweater to make for my dad and I had to do a little bit of adjusting. Even though his birthday is earlier in the year, I needed to add some length to it. And so I um, 
like did sweater surgery on it, cut it off, added more length, sewed it back together. Um, and he's super happy with the length now. He actually wore it for our family pictures this year. I'll put a picture up if there's one without the kiddos faces in them. Um, but just of him wearing it. He is so sweet. He wanted it. I sent him some patterns and he said, no, I want your design. Um, because I want to tell, you know, my friends that my daughter knit it and designed it. So I went with that. I used Cascade Eco Wool again <laughs> um, for both my parents this year. And he said it's warm and he loves it. And he's just very proud that I made it for him. Um, both my parents are, are very kind about their gifts um, that I knit for them. They always wear them and tell people that I made them. Okay, so then I moved on to a lot of sample knitting. Um, I've talked about this before. If you've watched my videos, I also sample knit. So I knit three adult-sized sample garments this year, and then I knit quite a few tiny-sized sample garments this year for Motion Friends. I have a different video on that. I'm not sharing those here. One, because I didn't get a lot of pictures of them, but also they're not adult-sized. They are super cute, and I wish that they were. Um, but anyway, the first that I knit this year was the Slightly Sassy V by Amy Schur. And if you go on their Ravelry page, um, I knit the two samples that are in the picture. I'll put pictures here, but if you're interested in just seeing more of her work, um, they are on the Ravelry page, which is pretty cool. Um, she always tags me and things like that when she is launching the pattern. So I don't share them while I'm making them. So you might see gaps in my knitting. <laughs> But afterwards, when they're being released, um, she'll tag me and say, Hannah made these. Um, but I enjoyed making them. It's a compound, compound raglan. The first one, the purple one that I made is De Rurum Natura in Albertine. This is silken wool. I had never used this yarn before, and I really liked working with it. And then the second one I made was the Pearl Soho Linen Quill, the green sample, which is short sleeve, full length. So the finished, uh, no, these are actual busts. So actual bust is 31 um to 57. it also has options for bus starts um lots of different shaping options it is compound raglan which i mentioned before which basically means it fits really well <laughs> so it was my first time doing compound raglan which was a little nerve-wracking for a sample make but i enjoyed it because it was like very i was very focused but then after once i finished the increases and the short rows and all of that, I could just focus on something else because it was stockinette for the rest of it. So I really liked making this pattern. The tester pictures were beautiful as usual. Um, and yeah, it was a lovely pattern. It did hurt my brain a little bit at first, but I definitely recommend it for the fit because even though this wasn't sized for me when I was making the sample, I tried it on and it fits so well, even though like, you know, I was making it for to fit Amy. It still fit me and I was like, wow. <laughs> I went through my pictures of me trying it on when I was sending her like pictures of how it was laying and stuff. And yeah, wow, it was gorgeous. So I don't know that I'll make this again because I've already knit it twice, but if I hadn't made it, I would make it because of, yeah, how beautiful it is. <laughs> okay, so after that, that was around May-ish when I finished that. And then I started knitting again for myself and I made the intarsia top. So I made this with my friend Haley from the Knit Weekend. It is um, a lovely intarsia project. It was my first intarsia project, which was one of my goals for this year. And one of my goals was to use up all of my summer scraps that I had. So this was wonderful for that. Um, the bust circumference is 33 inches to 60 inches. Um, and it includes a little bit of positive ease. So, okay, let's see. I will, well, I'll put pictures of, oh wait, no, I have it. I don't need to put a picture up. This is it. <laughs> I really enjoyed making this for the process, more of the process and less of the product because I can't say I wear this this much. Um, but I used Seniscar and Line uh, for this mane. And then this is Linen Quill from Pearl Soho. This is from Drops, the pink. Um, I think the white Haley sent me a few of her scraps. Oh yeah, and the brown as well she sent me. So yeah, that is all of them. And I just, I love how unique it is. And I knit it to pattern, but it's really short um, on me, which is surprising because usually things aren't short on me. And so I wasn't worried about lengthening it because I just knit it to the pattern. And usually when I do that, it's more than long enough, but it's a little short and that's part of it. It's also a little bit low in the v-neck which she actually models it with a t-shirt underneath and oh actually 
That would be cute with this one that I'm wearing now. Okay, that would be super cute. Maybe I will wear this in the summer with this little edge. That would be really cute. Okay, see that's what I wanted to do anyway, but then after I made it, I was a little bit like not as outgoing. As some of my friends commented, they're like, that doesn't really look a lot like you. We like it, but it doesn't really look like you. And I have to agree, but it was a fun project for using up my scraps and I had never done intarsia and I learned a lot. Haley and I both modified the pattern. She sent me her modification. So Haley modified it and I used hers um, to make the straps not I-cord and instead they are garter like the rest of the pattern with I-cord edges. I'm not sure if I can show that to you. There we go. Um, just so that they're sturdier and they don't stretch out um, as time goes on, but it's super easy. They're on Haley's Ravelry page. Um, yeah, I do really like it. It was fun. It was unique. I recommend the pattern. Anna has lovely intarsia patterns. That's kind of like her thing. So if you're looking to get into that, it would definitely recommend looking at her patterns. Um, they are innovative, unique, creative, beautiful, all of those things. Okay, I really tried to get into summer knitting after my intarsia top. I thought that was going to be my only like summer garment this year. And then I was like, you know what? That was actually really fun. While I don't know that it's the most wearable piece for me, I enjoyed making it and using up my like summer knits. So summer yarn, so I decided to make some more. <laughs> I test knit the Queen's Cami for Tori U. Um, and let's see, this is the front. And um, I used Echo View Fiber Mill and it's their tinsel yarn, although they no longer make yarn, <laughs> sadly. Um, so Echo View Fiber Mill was a mill in my home state of North Carolina where I live. I had visited previously and I bought this yarn there and they had this tinsel yarn and all of these beautiful jewel tones. So this is the pinkish color um, and it had two of these. And anyway, so the Queen's Cami by Tori Yu, the sizes available are for 28 inch bust to 60 inch bust. It's a tank top pattern, lots of modifications available. She had a high low hem. I did the straight across hem. I also did a pico edge, um, which I am really happy with. <laughs> I think it looks super cute. So I think there's a few issues on my side when making this pattern. I, after looking at the like, tester photos, well not really the tester photos, but just Tori's photos in general. I think that the back is supposed to be a lot higher than the front and I definitely made them identical. So I don't know where I went wrong here, but I think maybe I accidentally knit two fronts instead of a front and a back. Um, so I think that might, might be why I don't get as much wear out of it because it just doesn't fit quite right. It's also um, very short on me. And again, this is another thing where I just knit it to pattern and I thought, okay, like, well, actually I did crop it. I think I cropped it by an inch, but I thought, okay, um, I always crop by an inch. So I just went for it. Instead of looking at the schematic and seeing that it was already pretty cropped, I guess. Um, it's not marketed as cropped, but it's not full length for sure. So when I cropped it by an inch, it was actually really significant. So it's pretty short on me and I think I need to fix it. I think I just need to go back and like take out the tops top front and back add more length here maybe like this I have more yarn so that wouldn't be an issue it's just me actually doing it <laughs> and then um, knitting the top again because my sister has the same top we tested it together and she wore hers constantly this summer and so I think I just like made an error somewhere and it needs to be fixed so that I can keep wearing it because I do really like the yarn a lot it's so soft the tinsel is so light and beautiful and I like the pattern like it's Pretty, like the straps are really thick and the top itself is pretty high in the neck and so I feel like that's wearable for me I just need to fix it um, and figure out like why did I make two two fronts what happened there <laughs> um, so not a huge win but definitely an issue on my side not the pattern designer side okay my next summer top that I made I really jumped on the bandwagon here. I think I was seeing a lot of them for the summer and I just really wanted one too. <laughs> um, but I knit the Ranunculus by Midori Hirose Knits. This was a big win for me. Um, so actually how it worked out was um, I uh, Pearl Soho sent me the yarn. It's Santalina. So I didn't have to use yarn for my yarn pantry, although I'm sure that I will in the future because I like this so much. 
Um, but they sent me Santalina, which is um, this beautiful cotton base. And yeah, it's beautiful. The color is Beige Bunny. And I had to do a little modifying. Like I wanted it to be denser. And so I went down by needle size significantly to meet like the density that I wanted for the fabric. But then I had to do a little bit of like math <laughs> to make it work. So I think I knit like size four maybe the, um, and just did it. But the pattern is so like modifiable, I guess, that it's easy to do. Um, the finished bust circumference are 46 inches to 71 inches. So this is not 46 inches. Um, so I calculated like if this is my gauge and I knit this size, what will it bring it down to when I knit it? So the only place that didn't really work out is on the sleeves um, because they're just a little tight. But I think that's because I did in decreases in the I-cord. And so what I would like to do maybe is to go back and take the decreases out of the I-cord and just make it a regular I-cord. Otherwise, this is like the perfect fit. I wear this all the time. Um, I wore this all the time when it was warm and yeah, I'm really happy with it. I see why people make this pattern. Um, you can make it as unique as you'd like, or you can just make it two pattern. Um, you can use all different kinds of yarns. So and this was highly, highly influenced by Stephanie from Edible Thoughts Makes. I think she might, I could be wrong, but I think she might have a video of all the ranunculuses that she has knit so far. Um, she's made like some series of like, here's all of the like um, triangle or the half and half wraps I've made here. So, so she might, she might actually have one of these. I'm not sure. Um, but I'll link it if she does. But mine was influenced by hers. I believe she used Santalina for one. And I said, okay, that is the yarn I would like to use. And Pearl Soho sent it to me and it was, it was lovely. Um, okay. Then I had one last summer tea that I made and it was the Tolsta tea. I feel like this also took the, um, knitting world by storm this year, <laughs> just because it is, um, a lovely pattern and it's kind of like available for everyone I would say um, the, her sizes are for a finished bust of 31.5 inches to 66.75 inches so the pattern itself when you buy the pattern you actually get the worsted slash DK weight and the fingering weight version so I knit the fingering weight version and um, she includes a lot of different modification ideas in it so some for the folded neckband um, for stripes for all kinds of things. <laughs> so it really, you can make it however you'd like really. So there's lots of eyelets, different necks, things like that. Um, so what I ended up doing for this was I cast on a larger size for the neck and then I knit to the size that I wanted um, because I didn't want it to be super tight. And I love that, it worked out great. <laughs> um, I did these stripes in two different colors, but they kind of look like variegated. So the first um, is a white and the second is pink. The main color is from Ottoman Indigo in their classic sock. And it's, um, I don't remember the color. It's in my notes somewhere, but the yarn is discontinued at this point, but I had gotten it during their closing sale a few years ago, a year ago, two years ago. They all run together. Um, so I got it during the closing sale and I had it in my yarn pantry. I have a little bit left. So I don't know what I'll do with that. Maybe make stripes on another one. Um, and then this this um, white and pink is from Woolberry Fiber Co. I think it's from their Woolberry Virtual Retreat like two years ago. Yes, two years ago. And I hadn't used it. These are the sock minis. I love this. I wore it so much. Um, it already has some pilling and it's just from this year. Um, but I wore it, I took it to Denver on a girl's trip. I have worn it to the beach. I just feel like it's super versatile. I can wear it with jeans or black pants. I even wore it, I branched out and I wore it with like my army green, um, like cargo pants. Like I was really, I was going for it that day. <laughs> um, but again, the stripes are a little out there for me, but I really like how it turned out and I love wearing it. Um, so definitely recommend Tulsa Tea. And I did the figuring weight version, but there's also DK and it's all in the same pattern when you buy it. <laughs> Um, I did see so many of these this year. I think there was a knit along. I tend to like knit the popular patterns like a little bit late. So I was late to the Tolsta. I was late to the Ranunculus. 
<laughs> um, I'll share another one that I was laid to uh, soon, my last sweater for this year. But okay, next one, I made a lento. Um, if you followed my videos, there are some projects that I am like didn't make it to the finished objects for this year <laughs> that I started and then I just never finished um, because they just didn't work out for me. This year I tried to do that. If I started something and I made it like halfway through and I was like, this isn't working, I just put it away. Um, Cause in the past I would finish it and then see if I liked it. But most of the time when I have a feeling I'm not going to like it, I don't like it in the end. And so it's better if I just stop, put it away, come back to it. So anyway, I wanted to make a sweater for um, a trip that my husband and son and I were taking. And so I started one, I didn't like it. It was just like the ease was like 20 inches somehow and it was too much for me. And so I didn't like it, so I put it away and I cast this on instead and I love it. So this is my Lento. Um, from Lina Magazine by Jonna Hightala, and it is a classic raglan sweater, and I love it. <laughs> I knit it with Knitting for Olive Merino, which is fingering weight in the color Plum Rose. I picked that up at um, U-Vibers in Charlottesville when I visited there two years ago. And then I also, I held it with um, Alpaca Surrey Lang. Lang Alpaca Surrey from Freeman's Creative, which is my local yarn shop that I also got two years ago in 2021. And I held them together. It's just soft and warm and light at the same time. I really love it. Um, the Lento has the finished bust is 38 and a half to 37 and a quarter with the recommended ease being five inches. Um, I, that's what I did was recommended ease. And I'll put some pictures in too of me wearing it because I did get some good pictures since we were on our trip and I was wearing it. I wanted some pictures of me wearing it on our trip. So I have some good photos of me wearing it. Um, but this rivals my, the first cardigan for most worn of the sweaters I've made this year, just because I feel like it's so wearable. Um, I've made this pattern twice. I made one last year and I wore it just as much <laughs> as this one, but I cropped it. And this one I knit to the full length and I actually really like the full length. I'm not really a full length like knitter, mostly because I'm like anxious for my projects to be done. But I knit this one full length and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, I would, would make again, 10 out of 10, <laughs> would make again. I know this one's very popular and people do seem to make one every year. It knits up fairly quickly because it's knit at such a loose gauge. Um, so yeah, maybe next year. Um, my next finished object for the year, that was about September. We took our trip in September and the beginning of October. So I finished it like right up to the deadline to go. And then when we got back, I finished this um, in time for my birthday. This is a going cardigan um, and it is a fingering weight seamed cardigan. And the sizes available are from 43 inches to 73 inches, which are with a recommended ease of, I believe it's 12 inches. So I did that is what I made. I used the recommended yarn, Mondim by Rosa Pomar. I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like. I, I don't have buttons on it, <laughs> which is why I keep going like this because I like the view of it buttoned like that, but I just never sew the buttons on. I mostly wear this around the house as like a house cardigan. Um, but as the weather like gets warmer and whatnot, I think this is a perfect spring cardigan. I like the shoulder seaming. I like the sleeves. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. I modified it to have shorter sleeves. I recommended again, just cause my arms are kind of shorter, I guess. Um, but yeah, I do have this one on Ravelry. My project notes are on there. What's not to love. This was not a test knit. I wanted to test knit it, but I didn't think I would be able to finish it. So I still knit it in the same year it came out. Like, I just think this is so beautiful here. The button band is knit along with the sweater, which was my first time doing that. Um, I enjoyed it. It's like a slip stitch button band and I think it still looks really neat um, and like professional. I think it'll look really nice when I put those buttons on <laughs> and you don't just have a hole here. The buttonholes are rather big because the buttons are rather big that it calls for. But I, as soon as I saw the tester pictures for this, I was like, I know I'm making it. I have to make it. Um, surprisingly, I haven't worn it that much. It could be because I haven't put the buttons on. Also, because it's more of like a springy color to me than a winter color. Um, but I do like wearing it around the house because it's just so, 
It feels so comfy and wearable. Yeah, it was knit flat. It didn't take me forever. Um, even though it was like knit flat, fingering weight, seamed, ribbed, all that. It really didn't. I thought it would take a lot longer, but I don't know. It just didn't. I think because I was enjoying it, it's an enjoyable knit. Um, more of a product knit than a process knit, perhaps, but I liked both of them, so. <laughs> um, okay, let's see what my next, my next pattern that I knit is not out yet. So it was my third sample knit of the year for Amy, and I knit the weekday pullover. She recently put a picture from her Instagram up, um, kind of teasing the launch. I think it will be in January, so I feel comfortable sharing it here, but um, it is like a worsted or Erin weight raglan with a beautiful um, lace raglan seam. And I knit it in De Rurum Natura. I believe it was Cyrano. So that was a wool and spun yarn and I hadn't used it before, but I felt very fancy while I was using it <laughs> because it does seem like a luxury yarn. And yeah, it was really um, special to knit with and to make this pattern. Since I don't share them while knitting them, again, slightly gaps in my <laughs> knitting progress although this did not take very long to knit because it was um such a small gauge large gauge I don't know it's like 14 stitches um I'm assuming it's going to have a similar range to her other winter patterns which are from a 30 to a 62 inch bust that's from the coloring book raglan um so I'm making that assumption but I don't know because the pattern page is not on Ravelry however I'm sure it will be out soon and then you can make your own. I really enjoyed making it. I might make this for myself. When I tried it on to send like the finished pictures of what it looked like before blocking, I sent Amy a message and I said, um, never have I wanted to keep a sample more. <laughs> so it has a really wonderful fit while also having the lovely details in the shoulder um, raglan seam. So beautiful. I loved it. Highly recommend you knit it when it comes out. Okay, next I made the Cardi Jumper. So this is not yarn I already had this year. This is from um, a shop in Brussels and I tested this pattern for uh, the designer. So she previously had this um, design out, but it wasn't size inclusive. So now her sizes go from 30 to 62 inches. So she did a regrade, retest, all of that. And she made two different versions. This is the shape of the striped version, but without the stripes. Um, I'm sure you've heard my saga. If you've watched before, I'll link the videos that I talk about it in. But basically, I omitted the stripes because I didn't have the yarn with me that I was planning to use for the stripes. And then I didn't realize I was going to run out of yarn because I was like, I haven't, I have the recommended amount of yarn, but I didn't account for the yarn for the stripes that I did not use. So anyway, it was really short. I bought more yarn, but it didn't come in time. So I wanted to finish the test, so I finished it anyway. And now it's really short, but I still wear it. I've been wearing it with dresses and I get a lot of compliments on it. Also a lot of compliments on the buttons. They are also from Brussels. They're from Atelier Moon Dust. Um, and the yarn is from Sip and Knit in Brussels. Can't get focus on the buttons. Okay, well, anyway, they're lovely, um, sort of like those pearl buttons. They're um, brownish gold, really, really like. I highly recommend this pattern. I love the button band, but that's what's gonna make it complicated to fix it is the button band. So I'm just gonna add some more length. One of my goals for 2024 is to add more length. I really only need like another inch, um, but it would be complicated because the button band is applied. So you need it afterwards. So I might have to take the whole button band out or off and then add the length and then re knit the button band. It wouldn't be the worst thing, but it would be unfortunate. So we'll see, but I'm still wearing it in the meantime because I do really like it. Um, and it's what I was hoping for, a sweater to wear with my dresses that is white and goes with like all of them. So I'm still really happy with it. I would like to make more. Um, the recommended yarn is Mondeem. That's what I used for this. Um, I do have more in my yarn pantry, so I could make a multicolored version to use up those scraps, perhaps. <laughs> okay, I have another sweater. I just recently finished this one actually. <laughs> this is my nostalgia tee. This is by Emma of Bloom and Create is the name of her brand. The sizes available go from 34 inches to 30, sorry, 34 inches to 66 inches. Um, and there's modifications for short sleeve, cropped, full length, and um, three quarter length sleeves. So I knit the cropped and the three quarter length sleeves. As you can see, they are kind of long. 
and it has twisted rib in all the places. Um, so this is yarn I picked up in Denver with some dear friends of mine. We went to um, Fancy Tiger Crafts and I picked up Vovo and I already had this pink, which you might recognize from my canvas sweater. They look really different, honestly, when it's like in a different background. But anyway, um, I have this pink and then the brown is called fennel and the white is called lamb. Okay, so let's talk about mods that I did. First of all, um, I didn't use like a fingering weight sock yarn, which is the recommended yarn. So the drape is a lot different. Instead of a tee, it's much more of like a sweater sweater, like warm, um, all of that. And I'm okay with that <laughs> because that's what I wanted. Um, but it definitely sits differently on me perhaps than on the um, testers or designer. And I, I'm okay with that. I really like, you know, how it, it fits and whatnot. Um, I also lengthened the twisted rib here. I did two inches and two inches here versus one inch on top. Um, yeah, that is the modifications I made. I'm trying to think what else I did. Um, so one thing I did, I've never done an all over color work sweater. This was my first time doing that. And one thing I learned is that I should not have carried my yarn over the white areas that you see. So in the sleeves, you can see here, I carried the yarn from motif to motif, um, but people, I put a poll on my Instagram, people said I, they usually do that, but you shouldn't do that. Or you should make sure there's a lot of yarn in between because it's not a lot. I didn't use a lot of yarn in between. And so the sleeves bunch up a little bit. So when I measured them, like they're pretty good length sleeves. Like that looks pretty good. But when I wear it, it like bunches up kind of like that because the yarn is pulling um, and getting caught like on my undershirt or whatever. So I'm thinking about going back and cutting and weaving in the ends so that it doesn't bunch up as much. That just sounds like a terrible thing. <laughs> but I'm thinking about doing that so it doesn't bunch. Um, I'm not sure though. I've been wearing it. I am happy with it. I really like it. But those are just the things like I guess I'm learning as I continue knitting. Um, things you, things you learn, I guess. <laughs> um, so next year, if I knit an all over color work sweater, which I'm not planning to do, I will know you should not carry your floats across more than five stitches or five rows because this is five rows in between. I did it on the body and it does not bunch at all, but I feel like on the sleeves, because it was knit in a small circumference, it's more noticeable and my tension was probably tighter. And so when I carried the yarn, there was just more. That's what I'm thinking. Um, okay. I have one last sweater for the year. Today is when I'm recording this, it's the 27th. So that gives me like four days. I don't know that I'll be able to finish this, but I'm hoping I can. I think I can finish it. I don't know that I can block it. That's what I'll say. I am working on the stick season sweater. Another one by Rebecca of the Crea Bea podcast. So this is a lovely example of, I think this is European shoulder shaping, maybe European tailoring. Um, but let's see what it is. DK weight is recommended yarn, sizes one through 10, which corresponds to a finished bust of 32.75 and 68 inches. Um, so it seems like it's a pure DK weight. The gauge is 20 by 28. I'm using drops Lima and the color is just brown, <laughs> but I love it so far. I knit it to pattern and bound off. I didn't try it on, so hopefully it'll be fine. I knit it to pattern, um, bound off the body, and I started the sleeves. So I've done the short rows for the sleeves on this side, and I'll just knit more sleeve. So finishing up two sleeves in four days is kind of a lot. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I would really like to finish this before 2024, if not be really, really close to finishing it. Um, one, because I really like it and I'd like to wear it, but also it is nice to start the new year with like, totally new projects um, and nothing on your needle. So we'll see if I get this done. Um, okay, that was all my sweaters I knit in 2023. If you'd like to see what I knit last year, I have a video about that, I'll link that too. Um, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I can't wait to hear what you made in 2023, maybe what your favorite make was. Um, anyway, I hope you have a lovely weekend and happy knitting.